Good early evening, everybody. The meeting is called to order at about three minutes after six o'clock. The purpose of this meeting is to elect uh, the members of the initial board of the new consolidated district. Um, each town has uh, two representatives on the initial board. Uh, they will take over from the uh, transitional board that uh, has been working on the budget for quite a bit now. Um, so there'll be two representatives from uh, Stannard, Greensboro, Hardwick, and Woodbury for the time being at uh, a meeting after this one of the initial board. Uh, that group will discuss uh, the organizational articles for the new initial board. All right, this is not uh, in alphabetical order, apparently, if I have the alphabet right. So we'll start uh, by asking for nominations. Uh, the nominee must be from the town that is to be represented. In other words, the uh, nominee for the standard uh, positions has to be a resident of standard. And then the whole body will vote. All right. Well, let's get down to business then. The first item is to uh, elect one school district director for a term of two years from the town of standard. Are there nominations for school district director for a term of two years for the town of standard? The last name again, please. Arcuri. Does it spell it? A R C U R I. Lauren Arcuri is nominated to be school district director for a term of two years for the town of Stannard for the initial board. Are there further nominations for this position for two years? Further nominations. This is for Standard, representative from Standard for two years. Further nominations? We have other rep another representative to elect next. This one is for one school director for a term of two years. Okay, everybody understand what's going on? I may not have explained that very well. We're electing one representative at a time. All right, uh, if there's no objection, we'll close the nominations for a school director uh, for the town of uh, Standard for a term of two years. Lauren Arcuri is nominated. All those in favor of Lauren Arcuri as school district director for a term of two years for the town of Standard Please say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. And the ayes appear to have it. And Lauren Arcuri is elected school district director for a term of two years for the town of Standard. The next director to be elected is also from the town of Standard for a term of three years. Are there nominations for school director from the town of Standard to serve a term of three years. Nominations for a director from Standard to serve for three years. I make the nomination for Luke Gargiulo. Was that Luke? Yes. Gargiulo. Yes. Luke Gargiulo has been nominated. Are there any other nominations? Can I just uh, request that the nominees stand so we could recognize them? That certainly would be in order if the nominee wishes to stand. And there he is. Could we also happen to give a short testimony? Um, I'd kind of like to get to know who they are. I don't live in standard, so. Luke, would you like to give a short testimonial? <laughs> Grew up all over the country. 
country, came back to Vermont. I got two children in the school system. Uh, my daughter is nine, going on 16. <laughs> my son is uh, six, and I have a wife who works as a paraeducator in the school system. And I make ice cream. <laughs> Are there further <laughs> nominations? Are there further nominations for school district director for a term of three years for the town of Stanford? If there are none, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Luke Gargiulo to be school district director for a term of three years from the town of Stanford, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Luke Gargiulo is elected school district director for a term of three years from Stanford. The next officer, the next director to be elected, is one school district director for a term of one year from the town of Greensboro. Are there nominations for school director? Nominate Rose Modry. Rose Modry is nominated. Uh, <laughs> hi, Rose. Hi. You live in Greensboro, right? I do. All right. Should I give a short testimony? You may, if you wish. Sure. <laughs> I'm Rose Modry. I live in Greensboro. I'm fairly new to Greensboro, but I've lived in the area um, between Marshfield, Hardwick, Woolcott uh, all of my life. And Woodbury. And Woodbury, yes. Woodbury, Hardwick, Marshfield, Woolcott all of my life. <laughs> Thank you, oh, Rose. I've been on the Lakeview board, yes. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Rose, Rose Modry has been nominated. Are there further nominations for school director from Greensboro for a term of one year? Are there further nominations? Hearing none, without objection, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. Uh, all those in favor of Rose Modry to be school district director for a term of one year for the town of Greensboro, please say aye. All those opposed, please say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And Rose Modry is elected to be director for a term of one year for the town of Greensboro. The next director to be elected is a school district director for a term of two years. Two years from the town of Greensboro. Two years from Greensboro. And I'm Sam. Sam? Sam Friend has been nominated to be director from Greensboro for a period of two years. Are there further nominations for that position? Further nominations? Hearing none, with uh, unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Sam Friend to be school district director for a term of two years from the town of Greensboro, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And Sam Friend is elected to school district director for a term of two years from the town of Greensboro. The next officer, the next director to be elected is uh, that of, uh, to represent the town of Hardwick for a term of one year. This director post is for one year representing the town of Hardwick. Are there nominations? Catherine Ingram is nominated. I have lived in East Harvard for seven years, I think. And I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. And I've been serving on the Hardwick School Board for Hardwick Town School Board for two years, something like that. Thank you. Are there further nominations for school director from Hardwick for a term of one year? Term of one year. 
Hearing none, without objection, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Catherine Ingram to be school district director for a term of one year for the town of Hardwick, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Catherine Ingram is elected school district director for a term of one year from the town of Hardwick. The next director is uh, also from the town of Hardwick uh, to represent the town of Hardwick for a term of three years. Are there nominations for school district director for a term of three years for Hardwick? I nominate Kevin Moore. Kevin Moore. Yes. Kevin Moore is nominated. Hi everybody, uh, Kevin Moore, been on the Harvard board for a little over two years now, been serving as clerk. I uh, have a first grader and an incoming preschooler. Thank you. Are there further nominations for school district director for a term of three years from Harvard? Hearing none, with unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Kevin Moore as uh, school district director representing Hardwick, for three years, please say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And Kevin Moore is elected school district director for a term of three years for the town of Hardwick. The next director to be elected is that for the town of Woodbury, school district director for a term of one year for the town of Woodbury. Are there nominations? I nominate. Slater. Phoebe Slater is nominated. Can I ask the name, please? The name? Your name, who's nominated? Oh, my name, Patrick Slater. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Phoebe Slater. I'm on the Woodbury uh, School Board. Um, I've got a daughter in third grade and a son in kindergarten. And I'd love to eat ice cream, so we can get really good to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Are there further nominations for the position of school district director for a term of one year for the town of Woodbury? Hearing none, with unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Phoebe Slater to be school district director from the town of Woodbury for one year, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Phoebe Slater is elected school district director for a term of one year for the town of Woodbury. The last director to be elected is also for the town of Woodbury and this position for a term of two years. Are there nominations for school district director for a term of two years for the town of Woodbury? I nominate Kim Silk. Kim Silk is nominated. Good evening, my name is Kim Silk. I'm from the town of Woodbury. I've been on the school board for the last 10 plus years, working in some means of some capacity. I've been a resident of Woodbury for the last uh, 25 years, plus or minus. Are there any further nominations for school district director for a term of two years for the town of Woodbury? Hearing none, with unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Kim Silk for school district director for a term of two years for the town of Woodbury, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Kim Silk is elected school director for a term of two years for the town of Woodbury. That brings us uh, to the end of Article 1. Uh, and now, Article 2, to transact any other business that may legally come before the meeting. Is there any other business to... Mr. Moderator, the committee that was working on the Articles of Agreement would like to present our final draft that we will be presenting to this new board tonight. Please do so. May I borrow your microphone? Sure. Thank you. Good evening. This will be a little different than our informational meeting that we had a couple weeks ago. I'm just going to highlight what we've changed and then discussion can take place at the board meeting when the board has decided 
what they are going to do with the articles that we will be presenting them. The um, articles of agreement that we received from the State Board in November were called the default articles. And five or six of us met representing the four schools, the three schools, but the four towns, and discussed how we could make them fit our needs more specific than what they did in general. So I'm just going to highlight the ones that we changed. I'm sorry. I'm just going to highlight the ones that we actually changed. There were some that we could not change. There were articles that uh, there are articles that each town has to approve individually. So the ballots, when they will be cast, if the new board decides to vote on them, will be counted by town, and all four towns have to vote in the affirmative, or they re convert back to the um, default articles. And then the other articles that we change, the votes will be commingled and counted as a whole, and they will either go up or down. The first article that we changed was in regards to Article 3 that is entitled Attendance Restructuring of Grade Configuration. And Part A, I'll read to you what we changed. We struck what was in the default articles and we re reworded it to read, each student in the grades for which the new Union District operates multiple school buildings will attend the school that a student residing in that town would have attended in academic year 2018-2019. So in 20 years from now, if someone moves into Greensboro and we're still operating the three schools, they would go to Lakeview. If they move into Standard, because they would have gone to Lakeview, that would be their designated school. Provided, however, that a parent or guardian may enroll their student in any school operated by the new Union District, subject to the policies and procedures for intra-district choice, which shall be developed and implemented by the new Union District Board commencing in academic year 2019-2020. Inter-district choice may be limited only by applicable law or as necessary to achieve the legitimate operation of the new Union District. So what that means is you will be designated to go to your home school, but if the parent or guardian wishes, they can request that the child go instead of to school A to school B with the policies and procedures developed by the new union board. And some of the reasons that would not take place is if there is not room because too many people chose for that particular school or that grade level and busing situations and other such um, problems. Part B of Article 3 is the restructuring Or, or as, I'd like to just have a little bit of better explanation, or as necessary to achieve the legitimate operation of the new district, uh, new union district. Could you explain what that really means? Okay. Um, that would be if we were overcrowded, didn't have the facility, but that was the wording that our lawyer suggested that we put in there to cover if anything came down. And. I can't think of anything that we discussed. Stephen, do you remember? There wasn't any issue that was brought up under there. It was just to make sure that whatever we did was legal, that we didn't um, discriminate based on all the discrimination. I'm not even going to try to remember to recite because I'll miss one and then I'll be upset. And it's just to make sure that we are legal in doing it. Okay, in part B, we left it as it was, except at the end of subsection 2, we added, or any school building leased pursuant to Article 6C. And as you all know, Woodbury does not own their elementary school. The school board does not own their elementary school. The town select board does. So they are in the process of signing a lease, and we will operate that school for the new Union District as a leased building and we had to include that in the articles because they only talk about conveying a building, which means you transfer the title 
as Lakeview and Hardwick Elementary will. So that was just a housekeeping part. Under Article 4, for closure of school buildings, in Article A, um, there was a clause that treated Lakeview Union being a union district differently than it did Hardwick and Woodbury, and we struck that so that all three buildings would be treated the same. And we added the clause after building conveyed to the new union district by a forming district, again the same clause, or any school building lease pursuant to Article 6C. And then at the end of that section, we added prior to holding a vote on whether to close a school, the new union district board shall hold at least two public hearings regarding the proposed school closure. And this is for the first two years of the new union district. So it'd be academic years um, 19 and 20, and then 20 and 21. And at least one of the public hearings shall be held in the community for which the school is closed, I mean located. And that was a request from the last meeting that there be meetings held in the town if, we were, if the new board was going to discuss closing a school. So we did put that in there. And then under Article 4B, which is the closure of the school building, in academic years 2021, 22, and after. Um, I'll just read you the whole paragraph because we did make some changes there. In academic year 21, 22, and after, the new union district board shall not close any building conveyed or leased to the new union district or cease using the building to provide direct instruction in at least one grade pre-kindergarten through grade six unless first approved by the electorate of the new union district. So the full four towns would have to vote on it and approve. And again, prior to holding a vote on whether to close a school, the new union district board shall hold at least two public hearings regarding the proposed school closure. And at least one of the public hearings shall be held in the community in which the school is located. That would be a commingled vote for after 21-22. Um, and then... I, I just have one question. My understanding of the articles is that each one would be voted on independently. I'm not sure how they're going to be voted independently, but articles 3 and 4 have to be approved by each town individually. The rest of the articles, the votes, because you'll be voting in your own community. Each of the ballots for the rest of them will be commingled, and I haven't seen a ballot, so I have no idea. I'm not on that part of it. That is something the new board will have to do. My understanding though is that the articles you know, would be commingled, but that each town would be voting on each article. Each it's town will hold their own polling, polling. yes. And but you will vote. Just, but it's not just a yay or nay vote on either up for all the articles or nay for all the articles. I, I believe they will be voted individually, Diane, but again, I have not seen the, article, the warning, so, and they are individually, correct? Yes. Yeah, they will be individual. So Article 3, 4, and then the next one we changed was 6, which is real and personal property. There was part of that we could not change. There was part of that that we did not change. And what we changed was... Um, and this is if you sell a school or um, subsequent, subsequent, two town, okay. If we close a school in any town, the town in which that school is located, the select board or the community, but through the select board, would have the option to buy the school for, let me find where it says exactly, the, it'd be for the sum of $1 subject to all encumbrances of record, the assumption or payment of all outstanding bonds and notes, and the repayment of any school construction aid or grants required by Vermont law. So if there was an outstanding bond on school A that was voted to be closed, and the town in which A was located, the select board could, and I'm assuming they'd have to take a vote of their public, but I don't know the legalities. Um, would be a sum of one dollar, and if there was still an outstanding bond, Town A would have to pay that back to the new district and take it over. And 
the conveyance of any of the above school property shall be conditioned upon the town owning and using the real property for community and public purposes for a minimum of five years. If the town elects to use the real property exclusively for other than community and public purposes during the minimum five-year period, then the town shall compensate the new union district for all capital improvements and renovations initiated in the five years prior to the sale to the town. And if the town elects to sell the real property prior to five years, if they're not going to use it, then the town shall compensate the new union district for all capital improvements and renovations initiated after July 1st, 2019, which is our merger date, and prior to the sale to the town. So if they're going to use it and then decide not to, then we're saying only five years. But if they use it or decide not to use it, and this is the way that our lawyer had us put that in there, um, the town has to own the property for five years and use it for community and public purposes. If the town in which the real property is located elects not to acquire ownership, then the property shall be offered for sale under the terms of this paragraph P, B of Article 6 to each member town in the new union district in order of the proximity of their town line to the property. So if town A doesn't want the school, then it's offered to town B, C, or D in order of their proximity by town lines. So that we try to keep it in the community for public use if a building is closed. If no member town elects to acquire ownership of such real property, then the new union district shall sell the property pursuant to Vermont statutes and upon such terms and conditions as established by the new union district board. So if they close school A and none of the four towns want it, then they can sell it to the public as a freestanding building. And Again, there was a clause in here that was titled subsequent sale of real property conveyed by a forming district that was a union district and we struck that because that was treating Lakeview Union School and Greensboro and Standard different than it did Hardwick and Woodbury. So we took that out. So all three buildings and all four towns in the sale of a building, if it gets to that, going back to the town, will be treated the same. And part C under Article 6 is real property leased to a forming district. The new union district shall honor any contract in effect on June 30, 2019 for the lease of real property to a forming district until the termination date of that contract, which may be no later than June 30, 2021. Renewal of any such contract shall be at the discretion of the new union district board subject to any requirements reading to relating to school building closure in Article 4. And this will take into um, consideration the fact that Lakeview uses space in what I call the old school building, I guess it's their town building, and then Woodbury has the lease for their elementary school. And it'll be um, a two-year lease, and then the new board will decide how to handle it from there. Article seven, Article 7, we could not change. Um, Article 8, we could not change. 9, and could not change. 10, we did not change. And 11, um, we changed the title to start with, representation on the new Union District Board on and after the district's annual meeting in 2021. So two years from now is what we're talking. We struck the first paragraph that would leave the election as it was tonight, where all four towns got two members. Commencing, and this is our new wording, commencing at the new Union District's annual meeting in 2021, which will be two weeks before town meeting, so it's like the third week of February, the new Union District Board will transition to a hybrid model board composed of 10 members two Greensboro, five Hardwick, one Standard, and two Woodbury, elected on town meeting day by Australian ballot by the electorate of the new union district at their respective town polls. 
subject to the requirements relating to the nominations and preparations of ballots in Article 10, Paragraph C, subsections 1 and 2. And those just refer to the legal requirements on how to get your name printed on the ballot. You have to go out and get petitions. They have to be signed by voters of your town. The town clerk then verifies that you have the sufficient number for each town because they're all different based on your population. And then your name is put on a ballot and everybody in the four towns at town meeting will vote for every candidate like we did tonight. Each town clerk shall deliver the ballots to the elected clerk of the new union district. These have been the voted ballots. The district clerk shall count the co-mingled votes cast by the voters of the district and report the results to the public. A candidate is elected to serve in a seat allocated to the candidate's town of residence if the, can if the candidate receives a majority of the votes cast by the voters of the new union district for that seat. So I would envision the ballot being similar to when we elect the governor and the secretary of state. It says not to vote for more than one or two with their name and when their term expires. And then it says the district clerk shall count, but that doesn't mean the district clerk has to physically count. They just have to make sure that they are counted. In the spring of 2021, Standard shall not elect a board member. In the spring of 2021, Hardwick shall elect three board members according to the following terms. One member shall serve an initial term of two years, then a subsequent term, then the subsequent terms of three years. And two members shall serve an initial term of three years then subsequent terms of three years, and the expiration of the board members' terms shall be as follows. And that would, in 2021, we'd be electing so that in the term ending in the spring of 2022, then we would re-elect a Hardwick and a Standard representative. In 2023, um, terms would end for one Greensboro, the two Hardwick in 2021 that were elected for two-year terms, and the Woodbury. So those four people would be elected, and from after the 2021 election, everybody would have a three-year term, but we have to stagger them. And in the term ending in the spring of 2024, one from Greensboro, two from Hardwick, and one from Woodbury. And then it would just continue it whatever year. Except as provided for the election of the initial members of the union board, in Article 10B, and except as provided for the election of one, Hardwick, one member from Hardwick in the spring of 21 for an initial term of two years in this article, each new union district board shall serve for a period of three years. So that says that they're all going to be, and we struck the, article, the um, phrase that was in there from the default articles that said, until his or her successor is elected and qualified. So that would mean if someone did not run for re-election and the slot was then not filled because no one else ran for that position, according to these, that statement, you would have to stay on the board until someone was put on. But you've made the choice to get off, so we struck that, that you control when you're on the board once you've been elected. And then in the next paragraph, um, we struck that terms of office shall begin and expire on the date of the new union district's annual meeting because we're meeting before town meeting, so the terms of each board shall begin and expire on town meeting. Once a new person is elected, then whoever, whether they ran for re-election or not, they technically, that seat is vacated and the new elected board member would take over. It may be the same person as is common, someone runs more than one term, but we aren't going to make them stay on until someone is filling their position. And it won't be at the annual meeting, it'll be town meeting because that is when we're holding election. And articles 12, 13, and 14. Yes. Yes. So, uh, For clarification only. Because if you've got any comments on it, they go to the board meeting. So, uh, would you clarify, since you decided on the uh, three, two, 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 one, would you explain to us how you made that decision? It was recommended to us at the last meeting that we had discussing the articles. So the committee went with it. But I'm not going to defend what we're doing 
because that will be a discussion to have with the full board. I'm just presenting the information. No, this is 5221. Five, two, two, one. Weren't there, weren't there the only one? other one with minor was to leave it 222 two, two, and 2, but the bulk of the people that were here, it was our feeling, was 522 two, and 1. Diane? Was there a discussion on an alternate? We cannot discuss an alternate because we're not sure it's legal and how it needs to be put in there and we didn't have time to have another meeting because these are presented to the board tonight. So I would suggest you bring that to the new board. Okay, so there will be a public comment Yes. And then we added a new Article 15 for severability. And it says the provisions of any article, of these articles of agreements are severable. In any, if any, provision of these articles of agreement is deemed invalid or if any application of these articles to any person or circumstances is invalid, the invalidity shall not affect other provisions or applications that, be given, that can be given effect without the invalid provision or application. So what that means is if Article 2 is deemed invalid, then every other article will stay in place and we won't have to redo our document. So that's all I have to offer at this time. Peter? Could, you, could that be translated in as invalid as if, if one district voted against a, a, a one of the articles? No. What, what would happen if one district in Articles 3 and 4 votes down Article 3 or 4, then that article would convert back to the default language. It wouldn't be declared invalid. It would be declared not amended and so it would fall back to the unamended default article because we're only voting on amendments that the committee since, that has been meeting since December has agreed to put before the new board and say if article three is defeated by one town then that article would go back to the default article as presented to us by the state board. It wouldn't be invalid, it would be non-amended. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Oris. Is there any other business to come before this meeting? If there is not, a motion to adjourn is in order. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The meeting is adjourned at 6.40 p.m. Thank you.